disposal for any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Raf Sanchez from NBC News. The Ukrainian government is warning the Russians may launch a fresh, a fresh offensive potentially in the coming weeks. Have the Russians given you any assurances they will not attack power plants again like they have in the past? Well, obviously, uh, I do not uh, consult with them on military operations. We, this would be completely out of my mission. But uh, I am very clear about the absolute necessity to exclude nuclear facilities, nuclear power plants from any military action. This is, of course, a permanent message that I have for everybody. And so Fred Fleck uh, from CNN, first of all, what are the working, as far as the Zaporizhia power plant is concerned, what are the working conditions like for the IAE uh, staff that, that are on the ground there? Is it, is it workable conditions? And then second of all, is there still enough qualified personnel there to control all those processes? Because you have heard that some of the Ukrainian personnel that was then basically taken over by the Russians has, has decided to leave. Well, there are, two, there are two issues there. To start uh, with, the, with the last point that you're making, it is true that there has been quite a dramatic reduction in the number of staff. Normally, a facility like this has around 10,000 people working, and now we are down to 3,000, more or less. Uh, of course, this may vary. Uh, it is sufficient uh, to run the operation in the current conditions. You may be reminded that the, 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 the plant is not producing energy at the moment. It is still operating at a very low regime that is needed, what we call in the jargon uh, cold and hot shutdown, the six reactors. So we, they, they do have the people to do this operation, uh, but of course uh, it is a, a source of, uh, of concern. My technical staff is uh, looking at this, including the ISAMS uh, experts there on site. And regarding their, the, your, your first uh, question on their, their conditions, uh, they are fine. Of course, uh, this is uh, a, a facility that is under special circumstances, but they are fine and they can do their work uh, correctly. I, I am in contact with them daily, several times, several times a day. Yes, of course. Well, they have started, uh, with the exception of Kimlitsky, which is going to start tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. But they have started. They they are there already, and they have a long list of things that they need to do. You know, uh, the, a nuclear power plant is a very big um, a place where there are many things that need to be checked. We are uh, going through a number of activities that we are going to be working with, uh, the, of course, the, the Ukrainian uh, regulator and also Energoatom. Uh, there is, um, a, a, apart from that, there are some uh, issues related to su supply chain. Uh, in the current conditions, it is very difficult sometimes to get replacements, uh, pieces, uh, equipment that are needed for the normal functioning of the plant. So we are we are looking at lists of equipment that Energoatom and the, the, the regulator have sub uh, su submitted to us, and we're going to be working to try to provide those. So each. Each plant is different. Each plant has its different characteristics and, 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 and issues, and this is why we have a permanent mission of experts at, at each, each one of them, so we can look into what is needed at every place, according to their needs, of course. Director, we are almost a year into this war now. Can you just lay out the stakes here? How dangerous is this situation, a major conflict in a country with so many nuclear power plants? Well, the, the, the good side of the answer could be that almost a year after the beginning of a conflict, the first uh, major conventional war waged in, on a territory that has a vast nuclear infrastructure, uh, we, we've seen difficult moments. We had very difficult moments, challenges there, blackouts where the facilities were operating in emergency mode, and we saw the resilience of the system. This is very important. We saw that the regulator was well prepared. We saw that the staff at the plants was reacting in the way it should, it, they should, and, and we are here. And this is the other, the other thing. This, um, as any, I would say, um, war, it has a transformative uh, effect. Uh, and we don't know 
exactly how it will affect us all in the end. But one thing I can say, the IAEA has changed. The IAEA has been doing and is being called to do things that one w could have not imagined before. And, so, and also for us, uh, it has been uh, a challenge and we are very, I would say, committed to continue doing what, what we are doing. I think uh, the, uh, the, the situation is very precarious, as I'm always saying. I'm very worried about Saporizia. I'm very worried. Uh, what you said in your first question is an element. Uh, but even without new offensives or new campaigns, it's always on the front line. And uh, only today there were two major explosions in the vicinity. It was not at the plant itself, but uh, we were in alarm, we were in contact. So, so we know every day that, uh, that an, a, a nuclear accident or an accident having serious radiological consequences may take place any day. Uh, this is why I'm so concerned and this is why I'm still saying and I will continue to say it, the establishment of a protection zone around the plant is indispensable. What's it like dealing with Rosatom? Is there a relationship? Is it, is it cordial? Is it professional? It's with? professional. It's professional as it should be. It's professional. Mm -hmm. And I think we had heard some reports that the Russians possibly were thinking of uh, essentially connecting Zaporizhia to their own power grid. Have you seen any? No, I haven't seen anything to that effect. Mm -hmm. And if it was the case, our daily updates would report that, of course. How are talks going about a protection? Well, I, I, as I'm, I have been saying, I would, I would, I would love to come and tell you it's, 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 it's agreed. Uh, everybody agrees on something, which I believe is important. Uh, the plant needs to be protected. There is no doubt about it. Uh, what I, I need, uh, this is perhaps my challenge, because the, the parties are not negotiating with each other. It's the Director General of the IEA putting forward uh, proposals that are hopefully viable, that are reasonable, that are technically sound, and that they, they do not get into areas where it should not get into the military operations or considerations, because of course that would be uh, inappropriate. So. This is what I'm doing. I continue to do that. I had a good conversation with the president about that. I am going to visit Russia uh, soon, uh, uh, pressing for this. I think it's absolutely necessary. Do you find a spirit of goodwill, of cooperation, when you meet with Russian officials? Do you feel they wish to cooperate and achieve something here? Well, your question is, a, is an interesting one because it has a subjective element to it. Do I feel that they want to cooperate? I have a professional engagement with them. They know that uh, they, when they, the IAEA uh, is uh, engaging and is, is asking and requesting objectively technical questions that they have to comply with because at the end of the day, we should not forget that the safety standards that we are trying to implement have been agreed by everybody, everybody. So until uh, the, I have an indication that, uh, uh, um, that there is no engagement, I want to believe that the professional engagement uh, uh, is there. Please don't misunderstand me. This is not a value judgment. I'm not here attributing merits or lack thereof. But uh, my professional engagement is absolutely necessary with them as you may understand. You pointed out that we have made it almost a year now without a nuclear disaster. Do you worry the world is becoming complacent about the threat? Yes, I worry. I worry. That's an excellent point. I worry that, that this is becoming routine, that people may believe that, well, nothing happened so far. So uh, is the director general of the IEA crying wolf and nothing is happening? Well, it can happen any time. So, and my, my uh, duty is to do everything I can to prevent that from happening. Uh, when we had Fukushima, we could blame Mother Nature. Who are we going to blame if something happens? I have been saying we need to do this. I have been saying this would be the consequences of a radiological accident. We need to avoid it while there is time. So I hope my, my call is heard. Well, thank you very much. I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for organizing.